Okay, you've met my audience. Alright, let's set this up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, my fellow lovers of knowledge and learning. I'm going to read some excerpts from a Wall Street Journal article entitled The Mythical Pay Equity Crisis. The author is Gerald Sconing, and Mr. Sconing is a labor and employment lawyer in Chicago. I will then add some comments of my own. This editorial is from the October 14th Wall Street Journal of this year, and today's date is November 8th, 2014. Okay. As the 2014 midterm campaigns come down the home stretch, Democrats are, pound, are pounding on the issue of equal pay for women. In his speech at Northwestern University on October 2nd, for example, Mr. Obama said that we must, quote, make sure a woman is paid equal to a man, close quote. Um, Hillary Clinton said at a recent rally in Iowa that, quote, Democrats are for equal pay for equal work, and our opponents are not. North Carolina Senator Kay Hagan's campaign has blasted Tom Tillis, her GOP opponent, for opposing federal equal pay legislation. Uh, Hagan, by the way, did lose. As a campaign issue, demands for pay equity are beside the point. Equal pay for women has been the law of the land for more than a half century. Democrats say we need another new federal statute, statute to protect women because the existing panoply of federal and state laws prohibiting pay discrimination on the basis of gender are insufficient. Specifically, they have continued to press for the passage of the Paycheck Fairness Act, which according to its congressional sponsors would, quote, provide more effective remedies to victims of discrimination in the payment of wages on the basis of sex." Close quote. In reality, this bill would expand litigation opportunities for class action lawyers seeking millions of dollars from companies without ever having to prove the companies intentionally discriminated against women. The Paycheck Fairness Act instead is meant to address the fact that, quote, on average, full-time working women earn just 77 cents for every dollar a man earns, close quotes, as the Obama White House explains on its website. This is not a claim that any woman earns less than any man for the same work. Pay disparities between men and women generally reflect other factors, such as interrupting a career to raise children, the types of jobs men and women on average choose, and the type of education they have, for example, sociology versus engineering. Since 1963, it has been unlawful under the, equal, the Federal Equal Pay Act for an employer to pay a female employee less than a male employee for equal work. Sex discrimination in wages is also prohibited by Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And for federal employees of, uh, I'm sorry, for employees of federal contractors and subcontractors, Executive Order 11,246 prohibits gender-based pay discrimination. Finally, 46 states have anti-discrimination statutes mandating equal pay for equal work. Today, the Equal Pay Act and Title VII provide a woman who prevails on her wage discrimination claim, a virtual smorgasbord of effective remedies. They include, but aren't limited to, back pay, attorney's fees, injunctive relief, prejudgment interest, $300,000 in punitive and compensatory damages, an additional, uh, an additional 10,000 in penalties, and a prison sentence of up to six months for an employer who willfully violates the law. That. Campaign rhetoric and simplistic election year sound bites can and do mislead voters into thinking that gender-based wage discrimination is a national crisis 
and that women have no recourse whatsoever in the face of invidious pay discrimination by their heartless employers. Nothing could be further from the truth. Several layers of tough federal and state laws protect women from pay discrimination. So our lawmakers should ask themselves, do we really need another federal statute protecting women's rights to equal pay? The, law, the laws already exist in spades. These laws, those laws contain tough sanctions, generous remedies for violations, and establish powerful government enforcement agencies to pursue offenders. Uh, and then the final sentence is, the Democrats' populist campaign mantra about pay equity is empty rhetoric. Okay, and then my comments are um, that in my opinion the Payness Fairness Act, Paycheck Fairness Act, shows the continuing battle between labor and capital. In this case, women's groups are using the dubious claim that they are unfairly paid less than men, but I think it is similar to the battle over the minimum wage and the desire for a living wage. In both cases, labor groups want a higher rate of pay than what the market will bear. And what the market will bear is based on simple supply and demand of workers, not on racism, sexism, or any of the other isms that have been, have been alleged in the struggle for higher pay. So, the war over wages has occurred constantly since the beginnings of organized labor, and the Paycheck Fairness Act is just the latest battle in this war. Thank you for listening, and uh, you can see my audience behind me. Any questions, guys? They usually don't have any. They find my expositions clear and my reasoning acute and convincing. And I'd like to thank you for listening. And go Browns! <laughs>